There are about five ways that machines can learn. Um, but when you think of learning, do you think of schools and teachers like this uh, scene from the University of Bologna, the first university in Europe? Well, how about with the addition of technology? So in 1910, this is a French artist's imagination of learning in the year 2000 through the magic of audio over electricity. But still, a curriculum is being dumped in and fed through lectures. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about learning, not teaching. So let's pull the curtain back behind, uh, behind machine learning. So there are about five different ways of learning uh, with us that relate to machine learning. First, imagine that we realize there's something we don't know anything about and we're curious and we want to learn about it. And imagine, well, all of your learning happens through the interconnectedness of the neurons in your brain, the billions of neurons, each one connected to 10,000 others. Now, you don't take credit for that. That just kind of happens, nor can you take credit for the evolution that created that intelligence for you. Um, imagine that, well, you have lots of opinions and some of your opinions are based on firm evidence and others not so much. Imagine that you wanted to explore, why do I believe this? What's the evidence pro and con? You may have a problem and you think, oh, it's a little similar to something that I already know how to solve. So these five methods of machine learning are detailed really well by Peter Domingos in his book, The Master Algorithm. I recommend it highly. In fact, Bill Gates recommends the book to anyone who wants to understand about AI. Uh, the, bookshelf, the book is even on the, the president of China's bookshelf. Very, very important. Let's look at them one at a time. So one is imagine a, a machine that is kind of a learning scientist. Imagine that the, the Curiosity rover on Mars was completely autonomous and figured out what it needed to know and how to experiment, how to test it. In fact, there is such a, uh, an automated robot, Adam, but it's a medical robot. It already has patents. And there's a malaria drug that it has discovered that is currently in testing. <clears throat> you speak to your devices. They speak to you in a human-like voice. That's through the magic of neural networks loosely modeled on the neuronal connections in your own brain. Well, your massive intelligence was created through millions of years of evolution. Biological evolution is slow, but can we speed up machine evolution? Now, you ever look through the fog and think, what in the world am I seeing? Imagine you're a self-driving car on a super foggy day. What is this? You are uncertain of everything. And as you get closer and things get a little clearer, you continually update your opinion of what it is you're looking at. If you're a Netflix subscriber or you get books from Amazon, you know about recommender systems. They work by finding members who have similar tastes as you do. And then by analogy, if there's a movie or a book that they like, it'll be recommended to you with the high probability that you will like it too. So those five different uh, kinds of machine learning using Pedro Domingo's terms are the symbolists to try to create machine learners who are logical scientists, the connectionists who build neural networks, the evolutionaries who use genetic algorithms, the Bayesians who uh, continually update their understanding with new information, and the analogizers who try to solve new problems by finding similarities to those that are already known. So the big ideas here are that this is all about learning, nothing to do with teaching. Teaching is programming the computer originally so that it can learn, but the learning happens within the computer using the five, one of the five major methods uh, from the learning tribes. Uh, and each one of those has a similarity to human learning. All of them are powerful and flexible.